Hi, I'm Paul from the Studio Rats. In today's video, we're looking at this, which is the Great Eastern Effects Company's designer drive. Now, have you ever done a gig or done a recording session where you brought a bunch of different guitars and a bunch of different amplifiers and you've got your drive tone sorted out, you pick up a different guitar and that drive tone doesn't work because the pedal doesn't react with the guitar or the amplifier in the right way. And then the same applied with an amplifier where you plug into one amplifier and you drive sound fantastic with that amp, you plug into a different amplifier and they just don't work at all. Well, this pedal is designed to solve all those problems. What we're gonna do in today's video is to plug a few different guitars into this pedal and then this pedal into a few different amps and then see how it reacts to all those different combinations. So I'm gonna start the video today with this guitar, which has got P90s in it, going into the designer drive and then going into my Axe effects. Now, what I tend to find is that most drives don't work well with modelers and you end up using the drives inside the modelers for all of your drive tones. Now that's great, but if you're like me and you like to have a little bit more analog control over your sound, especially in a live situation where you can just literally bend down and tweak the controls, having a drive pedal or having some analog pedals can really help that sort of situation. Now let's have a look at some of the controls on this pedal. I'll read off the website what it says. The edge control controls the top end of the frequency spectrum, simultaneously adjusting two separate filters, a gentle treble roll off and more intense cut in the high presence region, as well as affecting the aggressiveness of the circuit's hard clipping diodes. And the width control is a six position rotary switch, which reshapes the pedal's mid range response, progressively introducing a lower mid range peak and adding more bass as you go from thin to fat. This control lets you instantly sculpt your tone while also dictating where across the frequency spectrum your amp gets pushed. Now the gain and level controls are pretty self-explanatory, but just in case you don't know what they are, the gain controls the amount of overdrive or distortion and level is the volume. Now for me, the width control is fantastic for shaping the guitar tone going into the front of an amp. So here's my clean tone. <laughs> And let's hear it now with the pedal. Now it sounds great, but the last time I used this pedal, I set it up with just straight single coils. Now with this guitar, it sounds a little bit too mid heavy. So what we can do is to wind back the width control just to suit this pedal with this guitar.
Now let's try it with something like a Les Paul. Now a Les Paul is traditionally a lot thicker sounding than even my sort of P90 guitars. So what we can do with the pedal is to adjust the edge control and the width control to really make that guitar fit in the mix. <laughs> So let's bring the width control back a notch. Bring back the gain a bit. And let's turn up the edge control just a little bit. Now, if I take the pedal out and hear the raw tone of the guitar, you can hear how sort of flubby it is in the bottom end, especially in the neck position. If you've got a guitar, something like a Les Paul, that's got quite a lot of those low mids that you want to reduce a little bit, this pedal works absolutely perfectly for that. Let's try with this guitar. This is a Sir Pete Thorne. Now, what I tend to find with this guitar is it's a really versatile guitar, but when you switch into the split coil mode, which is this humbucker at the top split, you tend to lose, like you do with a lot of sort of split coil guitars, you tend to lose a lot of bottom end. And sometimes these pickups can sound a little bit thin. So it sounds like this. It's great for those sort of glassy tones, but when you start to bring drive into it, it can sound a little shrill. In the last example, we had this pedal set up with the Les Paul to reduce some of those sort of low mids. Now with this, what we want to do is to increase those low mids. As you can see, it's quite bright. So we can wind up the width control. Once you find the right setting in the width control, the guitar sort of comes alive. If I just take it one notch higher, like I did earlier. Then bring it back. Now I've plugged this pedal straight into my matches amp over there and I'm using channel two of the amp, which is quite an overdriven tone. It sounds like this. So let's hear how this pedal works as that little extra boost to use as a lead tone. My Matchy Stamp, which is an Independence 35, tends to have quite a sharp cutoff on the bottom end. So you don't get like a lot of sort of low mids and that low rumble, which is perfect for recording as I tend to basically filter off those frequencies anyway. But what I'd like sometimes is to add a little bit more body or the low mids to that sound. And we can do that with the designer drive. <laughs>
And it's really nice because it sort of adds this, it's not a fuzz tone to it, but you get that sort of almost violin-like sort of tone. It's great. So there you go. There is the Great Eastern Effects Company designer drive. Now, if you're looking for a drive that works with any guitar and any amp, I can highly recommend trying one of these out. I think it sounds absolutely fantastic. And the fact that it can do all the drive jobs that I would use probably three or four other pedals to do makes it incredibly useful. Anyway, I'm Paul from the Studio Rats. I really hope you guys got something out of this. If you did get something out of it, don't forget to like and subscribe, click on the bell button, and you'll be notified of any future video that comes out from the Studio Rats. I'm Paul, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.